Yoski. Today uh, something different, uh, it is not a project and it's also not really a product review, more about me sharing a journey and uh, the fact that mechanical keyboards are extremely enjoyable and it's just amazing that you know just the different sounds and the feel of the keys makes so much of a difference but uh, yeah I mean so the context wise my own story with mechanical keyboards I think it was back in like 2016 or 17 I bought my first mechanical keyboard it was Tesoro Excalibur whatever you know, the sort of design in California made in China thing. And it was awesome, you know, it was like a full keyboard, RGB, which I turned off, but, you know, backlight and uh, I think it was the blue switches, not the Cherry MX, but uh, Kale, Kyle, oh, you know, whatever that K brand is pronounced. And, you know, life was beautiful. And uh, yeah, I think a year and a half into using that, I think two or three, uh, keys it's not like they fully stopped working they just started the jamming so you had to like press them multiple times but you know uh, it was my first keyboard so i was like well two years warranty so let's just send it for warranty repair and yeah they've done it i don't think it even took that much time they've returned the keyboard then it was you know all working uh, yeah except that the thing happened again but different keys in like uh, six months so at that point I was like, well, maybe I've just, you know, bought a cheap crappy keyboard. Maybe I just need to spend more money on the stuff and it will be fine. So I bought a second one. Uh, that one was HyperX uh, whatever, you know, like uh, with the floating keys. Uh, design was more expensive, like uh, maybe not twice as expensive, but around that. And uh, yeah, it worked fine. You know, I guess you catch the drift for a year and then something started happening so I basically assume that this environment has so much dust that uh, mechanical keyboards simply won't last long and you know I earn my living by typing a lot so keyboards are extremely important to me I actually have at this point at least five spare ones yes five spare ones including one that was like never taken out of the box and the rest was tested, you know. So that's that's the level of importance that keyboards have for me. But yeah, why do I have this thing here? So this is a Chinese thing and uh, it has some features that made me actually try it again after all those years. So first and foremost, the most important part is that each of the switches is removable. None of the ones that I had <laughs> almost a decade ago, all, the, all of them had the switches soldered in. So, you know, any problem with a switch, the whole keyboard is pretty much useless, even though it's like one of a hundred keys. In this case, each and every switch removable, which was the main thing. The other thing is that, as you can see, this is not a full keyboard, it's the reduced one, but it still has all the editing keys here, which are extremely important to me. I mostly do, uh, you know, like command line encoding, so moving around, like changing just a single word, really, really important. And uh, it has some bonus features, uh, which as you can see, this is wireless. And this is really cool, because this has like a radio dongle, which I'm using right now, but it also has Bluetooth and you can pair it with three devices. Uh, of course, not at once, you can like a switch profiles and it also can work using a cable, which you get with the keyboard. So it's like a three modes of uh, connecting, um, extremely versatile. And you know, like it, it's cheap, it's cheaper than the Tesoro bought by about a third. So this is pretty awesome and I mean the build quality for the price, really good, it's all plastic but decent plastic and as you have probably noticed already it has this gimmick of, uh, of an, um, it's not LCD, it's like OLED screen which actually in practice is not that gimmicky, why? Because you have plethora of options for lighting, you know, animations, even like the sides have LEDs so I think you can access all if not like at least most, if not all of those functions using some arcane, you know, combinations of keys. But this thing, it's much easier to use, so you don't have to remember that. And in the case that you need to change the backlight, you can do it from here. Let me even try show you. Yeah, okay. You see? So that's, that's actually not that bad. And this is also the way where you switch the... Bluetooth profiles, but again, I'm sure there's like a keyboard mashup, whatever, to do that. 
So yeah, I've gone back to this rabbit hole. Again, in this case, I think that if a switch fails, I will replace that. And yeah, this sort of keycaps, yeah. So this is a thing, you know, with those kind of things, which is why this is a hobby, is that it is extremely easy to spend more money on that. So as you can see, I have keycaps for days and also switches for days. So these are the switches I've taken out of this and they are basically spares and some of the ones that I bought because uh, I've modified uh, some of the keys here. So if you can hear, you can really should be able to hear. This is like the normal sound of the blue ones that they came like the whole keyboard was just those blue switches. But then I have other ones. Listen to that. But now listen to that. You know, it's subtle, well, maybe this is like the least subtle, but you also get like a different um, different tactile feel. So yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a rabbit hole, which is what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, they are awesome, but they can be <laughs> a great uh, money thing. But then again, if uh, most of your day you're typing on the keyboard and this is like your trade tool, I think it's actually worth the money to spend uh, on a proper keyboard. And again, as long as you have removable switches, I think any sort of mechanical failures, because, you know, these things are mechanical, that's the whole point. So they have a limited uh, lifespan, sooner or later they will break in one way or another. So just having a bunch of spells and replacing them, it's uh, probably a good way to approach that. And uh, what was that? Oh. Yeah, I don't think this microcontroller. <laughs> I guess it's camera shy, broken camera. Let me try to show you. I don't know what it's doing, but this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's Chinese, but maybe we should reboot the keyboard or just turn off the light. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't really need the light. And yeah, we'll see. Okay, back to normal. <laughs> Maybe it's like losing energy or whatever. And yeah, this has built-in battery, obviously. You charge it via USB-C. In my use case, it lasts about two to three days, which is perfectly fine. It's not like you have to charge it every day. And uh, yeah, I hope this was... Uh, <laughs> Maybe not inspiring, but at the very least uh, somewhat interesting. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching and thanks for uh, listening to me. Have a great day and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye! <laughs> Alright. And now we're done.